Hi YouTubers, resellers, and thrifters. My name is Carrie, and my channel here on YouTube is Be Carried Away. If you're new here, thank you so much for finding me. And if you're a regular, thank you so much for coming back and welcome back. I have a good old fashioned what's sold video today. These are actually my favorite kinds of videos to watch from other resellers. I feel like I learn the most in the quickest amount of time and you get a real um, look at what items are actually going for, not, you know, kind of what we think they might go for or what the comps show, but what do they really actually sell for? So I'm going to go through my sales for the first half of July. I'm a little bit behind on my what's sold videos. I do definitely make an attempt to slow down my sales during the summer months. I've talked about that in uh, multiple videos, and that's because we do our own sort of summer slowdown because we are taking more time off than we do uh, during other seasons. So I'm gonna get right into it and show you what's sold starting with the first sale on July 1st. I'm gonna go through eBay and then I'll go to the other platforms as well. The first was this, uh, I'm gonna put the items up next to me, was this Lala Loopsy stretchy hair doll. I don't do a lot of toys, but I started trying to get into plush. So I picked this up for 79 cents at a Salvation Army. I only sold it for $12.99. But this went to France, and so the buyer was all in for $43.91. I am going to give you the all-in price. Um, I think it's more important to know what the item sold for, but the all-in price is what the buyer pays with shipping and tax. And it, so it does give you an idea of what someone is willing to pay, what someone you know is willing to literally take out of their wallet for that particular item. Um, and that's another kind of metric that you can use when you're thinking about um, purchasing. Now, you don't get that money, the shipping or the tax, but it does help you to kind of figure out where to price the item. Second was this pair of Victoria's Secret um, satin slippers. I purchased these for $1.99 at my Salvation Army and they sold for $18.99. The buyer was all in for $22.94. Simple sale. Next, a dead stock sweater. Now, dead stock, as you might know, means that the item is vintage, but the tags are still on it and it was never worn or used. These are really valuable items. Um, you know, they'll generally sell for more money if they're in great condition with the tags and the buyer's gonna be the first one to wear them, even though they might be from the 50s, 60s, 70s, etc., uh, or any decade. But this was um, a dead stock. The brand is called Cape Cod and that is a vintage brand that I come across pretty regularly. They did a lot of, um, just like what it sounds like, kind of um, light, summery, casual, kind of um, resort casual type wear. And this was a very uh, thin sweater, a short sleeve sweater in mint green. And I sold this for $20.99. The buyer was all in for $27.26. Next was an Alfred Dunner, uh, new with tags, uh, lavender shirt and this came as part of one of my few ever auction buys. I bought a closet so I got this idea from Kat the Nurse Flipper and um, a couple of other people do that as well. If you go into like high bid online auctions you can often purchase an entire closet of clothing and it's sort of sight unseen. So I did this. I got the whole closet of clothes for two dollars. There wasn't a lot of high-end stuff in there and I knew that was going to be the case but I put in a really low bid and I probably got 50 to 60 pieces of um, kind of, you know, an older woman's clothing. Now, a lot of it I had to re-donate or give away because it just wouldn't sell. Um, and some of it was kind of musty and I had to just get rid of it. But I did find a few pieces that I was able to sell and this was one of them, this new with tags, Alfred Dunner. So Alfred Dunner, you know, it's not a high-end brand, but it does sell, particularly if it's new with tags, or if it's um, a plus size. I just sold three Alfred Dunner pieces yesterday and today. So that's, you know, August. And that's unusual. I don't usually sell them that, that quickly like that. I don't have that much of it even listed, but it's kind of a unique coincidence. So Alfred Dunner, you know, don't necessarily look the other way, but those are the only two cases where I do pick that up. And that's if it's new with tags or if it's a plus size piece. So that sold for um, $15. That was a buyer best offer and the buyer was all in for $21.49. Next was this sweater. I did a short on this uh, when I was camping. I had it with me because I was going to ship it from where I was. Um, and it was to say that there are no seasons on eBay. People are buying all kinds of clothes, all different times of year. This was a sweater that was made in Nepal, really, really thick wool. 
beautiful um, pattern on it with these children. And that sold in the middle of July for um, 38 Wow, yeah, that sold for $38.99. That was my full asking price. The buyer wall was all in for $42.38. Next, a uh, children's book. I have a ton of books. I actually started out as a book reseller. I kind of just got away from it. Um, it is very time consuming. I personally would kind of go down a rabbit hole doing research on the books. Um, and so I have a lot of them. And for a while, they kind of stopped selling so well. But books are back, and I know a lot of resellers who are doing really well with books, and so I'm going to start kind of, I don't know that I'll be sourcing them a lot, but I do have a lot that I can sell. So, you know, here's a book that I just had on my shelf. It sold for $18.99, and um, it was The Old Witch. This is a series. Buyer was all in for $23.88. Next, this was a really cool pickup. Um, these were some glassware tumblers that were shaped like Wilson tennis um, tennis tins, you know, the tins with the three balls inside. And um, these sold for $45.99, and the buyer was all in for $59. Next was a USMC Marine Corps um, men and women's surgical cap. Now, this was something that Mike bought on Etsy. Uh, he's a Marine and a nurse, and so, um, he bought these for himself, but the woman who made this actually sent him the wrong size. Rather than bother with, you know, shipping it back to her and all of that, we just decided to put it up for sale. We sold it for exactly what he bought it for, which was $21, and the buyer was all in for $23. Just a $2, you know, it was real easy to ship. So, um, oh, wait a minute, no. The buyer was all in for $33. Sorry, I misread that. This one to Chile. This one to the country of Chile. So sorry about that. So um, that's a nice thing about being a reseller. If you buy something that you need to return or you forget to return or you for don't find the receipt, sell it and get just exactly what you paid for it generally. Um, next was a just a basic sale, a t-shirt, Girl Scouts. I paid just a dollar for this t-shirt on 99 cent day at my Salvation Army and it sold for $22.99. And the buyer was all in for $28.99. Next, this was a uh, pair of shoes that I got on 99 cents day. I knew they wouldn't sell for much, but for that price, I figured they were kind of a, a novelty sort of item. This faux leather, they were just vinyl, but they were this really unique purple color. And I thought there's probably somebody out there who's going to want these. And sure enough, I sold them for $15. The buyer was all in for $24.99. So for a 99 cent buy-in, that was a, an easy sale. Next, this is an item that I learned about from watching the big channel, really successful channel, Rally Roots with Ryan and Allie. And they're a lot of fun to watch. Um, they run their business in um, a very different way than I do in terms of they are big. You know, they're out to sell lots of stuff, do a lot of um, uh, wholesale and that. And um, I'm more of a sometimes part-time reseller. So I do do full-time as well. But um, they bought, I think, a, I think a wholesale order of these Chubbies. And that's how I learned about this brand, watching YouTube. So I picked up this pair of Chubbies for $2. They were half price. Um, they were brand new without tags. They looked like they had just never been worn ever, nor washed. And um, I sold those for $42.50. So I was really happy with that sale. The buyer was all in for $50.77. And next I have this brand called Beach Lunch Lounge, which I probably will put in my next, um, I did a video recently on summer brands to look for, and I didn't include Beach Lunch Lounge, but I will in my next um, video like that, because these I bought for $1.99 at my Salvation Army. These are um, just linen, cotton blend, wide-legged capris, that really cool um, fabric and really easy, you know, wear to the beach, wear out to lunch, that sort of thing. They sold for $28.99 and the buyer was all in for $36.83. So that's a nice profit on those. Next is a brand called Roper and Roper is the maker of Western wear. So I've picked up a pair of shoes recently from Roper 
and then they have these shirts. This is a women's button down. So this is a, a fancy Western shirt that someone might wear if they're doing rodeo um, or, you know, they're out at a country Western concert and want to dress in this Western fashion. So this ha was turquoise with this Aztec sort of pattern. And I sold that for $38.99. I picked that up for $3.99 at my Salvation Army, the buyer was all in for $46.30. So again, when you think about that all in price, close to $50, this buyer was willing to pay for that vintage Roper shirt. So that had the pearl snap buttons. That's something to look for as well on these vintage pieces. Next is a brand um, that I did talk about. No, I didn't talk about this in my summer. So I'll put this in next time. And this is called Real Life and Real is spelled R-E-E-L, like the fishing. So this is a fishing shirt. This is a women's uh, sun protection, lightweight fishing shirt. Just a very simple pickup for $1.99 and I sold it for $14.99 and the buyer was all in for $20.31. So the Real Life, it doesn't go for a lot of money. If you can get it, if you can get it low, that's a great pickup. Next is an item I sold twice. So it's never be afraid of refunds or non-paying buyers. If you have a good item, it will resell again, sometimes for more money. Um, in this case, this sold for $35. I'd have to go back and look at what it sold for, but it was already in a what sold video. So um, the buyer was all in for $42 and change. This is a 1970s Coca-Cola plastic um, thermostat. So nice sale. Next, you saw me source this item. This was on the new racks at the Salvation Army and I paid $4.99 for this on a really quick, when I didn't have a lot of time, I just went to the new racks. This was something I wanted to comp and this was because it was unusual looking. It's a Monster Energy logo jersey and that sold for $58.99. The buyer was all in for $71.54. So that turned out to be a great pickup. Next was this really beautiful, beautiful um, print hand colored botanicals. So botanicals are very popular. If you find botanical prints and they're um, authentic or old, meaning that they're hand colored, you can really tell by looking closely at the paper if it's not a print. Um, these, the very, very old ones were hand colored. Now this I know because it was part of a group of them. And other people were there ahead of me and bought a bunch of them at the Salvation Army. They were on the wall and people were just kind of pulling them down. I happened to get this one and um, whoever collected these had a beautiful, beautiful collection that they donated. I sold this for $68.99 and the buyer was all in for $94.94, so almost $100. I even think I probably undersold that, but... Um, you know, on eBay, you're not going to get what you might get at auction. And I wasn't able to really um, find out as much information as maybe an auction house might have. But I did, I was able, if you look at the names and all of this, I was able to look up um, where this came from. You know, I did the research on it. So for us, you know, a $60 profit, that's worth me putting in the time to do the research and to look up um you know, who made the print, where it was from, and all of that. It's, it's worth the time and effort if it's going to be, you know, a high selling item like that was. Next are a pair of uh, a no-brainer pickups from Patagonia. Just came across these Patagonia uh, wave board, nylon uh, Bermuda shorts, and these sold within a, just a day or two for $30. I picked those up for $3.99 at my Salvation Army. Next, you saw me pick this up in the um, five minute thrift with me challenge. This was Lily Pulitzer. I couldn't believe I saw this beautiful Lily Pulitzer dress for just $5.99 and it was new with tags, just could hardly believe it. And I sold that for $99. The buyer was all in for $113 and change. Lily Pulitzer is a great brand to pick up. Next is this beautiful Icelandic 100% uh, wool sweater made in Iceland. This is a sweater coat. Again, sold this in July and it went to um, the United States somewhere. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head and it doesn't say here on my list, but I sold this for $38.99. This took a really long time to sell. I think I had it priced significantly higher. It got a lot of interest, but I had it priced a little bit too high. And when I got it down to that just under $40, then it sold very quickly. So the pricing game can be tough sometimes. Sometimes you might have to play around, you know, 
lower the price, sometimes even raise the price though. So it's not always about lowering it. It's about having it, um, you know, at that right market value that somebody's willing to, to purchase the item. So that was a $38.99 sale and I bought that for $4.99 at my Salvation Army. Almost all of these clothing items are going to come from the Salvation Army, which is where I do my regular uh, thrifting. Next was this vintage Tommy Hilfiger uh, jeans denim dress. And this was a size small. It was very stretchy and it had the kind of pink and blue um, detail on the collar. Sold for $32.99. The buyer was all in for $38.94. And just a basic Tommy Hilfiger sale. I don't do really necessarily very well sometimes with Tommy Hilfiger. I do find a lot of it. He grew up in my area. Um, I'm outside of... Um, the city that he grew up in and people generally like his stuff I see it quite a bit but it can be a long tail seller but this sold pretty quickly so I was happy with that price on that item next I have this Ralph Lauren uh, white cover-up just a really light cotton white cover-up but in the form of a, a dress and that was 99 cents it kind of got lost in the shuffle at the thrift stores and with all the white shirts and it's very very thin so again it's really important to just go through the racks one by one whatever rack you're looking at if you're just skimming you might miss an item like this and I picked it up for 99 cents and sold it for $28.99 and the buyer was all in for $32.48. Next was a very simple sale this took forever to sell and that's why I'm very careful with J. Crew. This was a J. Crew women's pencil skirt. Really cute, but just a, a basic, you know, a basic pinstripe, uh, black and white striped skirt. And I only got $16.49 for that. It uh, was $22.72 all in. I wouldn't pick that up again. I wouldn't pick up a basic uh, J. Crew piece like that. Next was a brand I love to pick up, and this is Soft Surroundings. Soft Surroundings has linens. They have um, log and look. They have kind of flowy um fabrics and designs and styles so this was a plus size so soft surroundings in a plus size even better i picked this up for 3.99 and i sold it for 38.99 and the buyer paid shipping they paid 48 dollars and 83 cents all in next this was a fun sale i picked up this in a bag someone had these old uh vintage solo cup where you, it was kind of the plastic cup frame and you would buy the solo cup paper to put in but these were the coffee cups so these are great for camping parties and things like that it was a large lot of them that I picked up for $2.99 um I think I had yeah 28 of them they were kind of dirty you know it's like something somebody took them out of the garage and to, to clean up all of those I just didn't feel that it would be worth the time that it would put that it would take me to clean those up ready to drink out of them it wouldn't take much but the amount of time and effort it that I would have had to put in I didn't think it would increase the price enough so in other words you know sometimes I do clean up items I'll even sew or patch a few things you know if I pick something up that needs to be cleaned but it's all going to depend on the effort that I'm going to put in versus how much the price is going to go up and I thought based on the comps that these were going to sell at about this price no matter if they were sparkling clean or if I wrote in the listing like I did that the buyer would have to clean them up when they got them so they sold for $23.99 and the buyer was all in for $34.22. Next was a decorative plate I'm really careful with decorative plates because they take a really, really long time to sell. This one took a very long time, but I got a great price for it. I picked it up for 79 cents at my Salvation Army, and it was from the 1940s, hand signed. This is a series, so when I did use Google Lens to look this up, I was able to find it. Um, and so I had a lot of information on it, and I sold it for $21.99. Buyer was all in for $33.90. Uh, four cents so someone's willing to pay like $34 for this so I picked it up for 79 cents so it sat for a while but that's okay I'm a long tail seller next was an item that was an Iron Man championship um, oh yeah this was in one of my uh, this was in one of my um, thrift with me videos I was gonna give this to my brother and then I looked at the comps and you know he didn't really run this particular race and so I decided to sell it and I did get um, 
$38.99 for this 99 cent hat. So any Iron Man, uh, particularly Iron Man finisher items are worth picking up. These are the things that the the co competitors get when they do finish. And so it's worth picking up finisher items in particular. Next was an Athleta sweatshirt. And Athleta is a great brand, always worth a pickup. If you get it at the right price, I paid $5.99 for this hoodie. I was able to look up uh, using Google Lens and using some descriptive um, words that this was long and all of that kind of stuff. I found out that it was called the Stronger Longer CYA, which is cover your ASS um, hoodie sweatshirt. So that's the name of the sweatshirt. Um, and then you're able to put that in. And so someone who maybe has one or knows that's exactly what they want are able to look it up by the particular, you know, not just style and brand, but actual um, type and I sold it for $44 and the buyer was all in for $51.40. So again, a great sale. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over to, those were like the first half of July. I'm gonna go over to Poshmark and see what I sold over there. Okay, so these are my Poshmark sales for the first part of July. The first item was this Adidas Stella McCartney collab an oversized gray sh sweatshirt. So I don't live in a fashion mecca, but Adidas and Stella McCartney is a great collab that's uh, sought after. And I sold this for $50 on Poshmark. So of course on Poshmark, Poshmark the shipping is um, included in the price for the buyer. So um, the all-in price is always gonna be plus, uh, you know, $7.25 or six or $5 if I give a shipping discount, but I did not on that. And next are these Columbia Chinook uh, Chukka boots. So these were brand new, picked them up at My Salvation Army for, I, I paid up for these, so I paid $9.99 for these, but they were absolutely brand new. And Columbia is a great brand, men's. These were a no brainer, and so I picked those up. Next was a shirt that I only sold for $9.99. I picked this up early on in my clothing days, and it's been sitting for a really, really long time and I paid 99 cents. I sold it for $9 just to, you know, say goodbye, make a little profit so that that purchase price isn't cutting into my other profits on better items. Next was this L.L. Bean camouflage camo backpack, and that's been sitting for a while, but really it hasn't been backpack season, and with um, schools being closed and people doing homeschooling and all that sort of thing, I really didn't expect it to sell immediately, but I picked that up for $2.99, and I sold it for just $20 on Poshmark. Next was this really cool Aztec pattern vintage L.L. Bean um, shirt. And this was a chamois, which is that kind of, um, it's not quite flannel, but it's not quite cotton. It's that real soft uh, brushed cotton. And this I sold for $32 on Poshmark. I picked that up for $4.99. Next was this M. Mac geometric log and look dress. This was a brand that was in my summer bolo brands to be on the lookout for. M Mac is a an offshoot or sold at the Vermont Country Store, which is also something to be on the lookout for. So this M Mac fish dress, this geometric fish dress, sold for $35. Next was a cotton v-neck sweater. This was, you know, um, a lightweight cotton white sweater crew neck, just a basic sweater, but it was Brooks Brothers. And so when I saw that for $2.99, I did pick it up and I sold that for $27 on Poshmark. Next was this new Woolrich 100% uh, lambs wool vest, again, selling in July. Sold this for $35 on Poshmark and it was new with tags. So any Woolrich is almost always a pickup for me, depending on condition and price. But when it's new with tags, it just becomes a no brainer. Next was, again, L.L. Bean. So you can see that, you know, I do pick up L.L. Bean, Woolrich, some of these basic brands that I can come across pretty regularly. Um, this was Baby Blue Wool Blend Top. It was a medium, and I sold it for $18. I picked it up for $1.99. The woman who purchased this said she used to have this exact same shirt, and she just kind of wore it out and loved it, and she was so happy that I had it. So a lot of times buyers are looking, you know, they know exactly what they're looking for. Not always, but sometimes. Next was this really cool 1960s, 1970s plaid men's bathrobe or robe. And I've said in other videos that during the real lockdown, I sold so many bathrobes. Everybody's home. It was just everyone I had pretty much sold. So I have been picking them up. 
Um, I'm not sure they'll sell quite as well this year, but um, this one did sell for $25. I had picked that up for $2.99. Next was a Talbot skirt. I do like the brand Talbots. This was brand new with tags. It was an $89 skirt. What I don't like is I don't often pick up skirts. Skirts to me are, are for me are a very hard sell. There are lots of skirts out there. Um, I think they can be a tough fit sometimes um, and that sort of thing. But this was a size 14, new with tags. That's gonna be a pickup. And it had this really, really beautiful floral pattern. So I sold that for $18 and I picked that up for either $2.99 or $3.99. Not a great profit on that one. Next, something really not a great profit, but I'm willing to sell low if it's something that, you know, I was almost ready to take this back and redonate it, but I do leave things listed. And I do recommend doing that because I think I made $4 on this, which is maybe $2 more than I paid for it or $3 more. That's not the kind of sale that I want to be making. But if I'm going to recoup the money that I spent on that, it's going to you know, not cut into the profits on the other items. So in this case, it had been sitting forever and I sold it. The salmon kimono sleeve top, seven bucks. Okay, next, this is the United Colors of Benetton. So this is vintage, really cool jean jacket with this uh, striped colors and uh, really great condition. This was like new condition. It looked like it had never been worn. And I was able to find, on uh, Poshmark, you can use the um, online photos from the manufacturer. And so I was able to find that, which was great because then the buyer, I like using them. I think that I don't like using them to kind of uh, show the buyer that that's what you exactly are selling. But if it's an additional photo, in addition to the photos that you have and you're allowed to use it, I think it's great for the buyer to see what it really looks like on and modeled. So I sold that for $35 and I picked that up for $2.99. So that was a great sale. Next are these Lucky Brand um, Stretch Lola jeans. I am a terrible jean seller. I don't know why. I have a whole bunch of them to list. I just, you know, I'm not in tune with kind of maybe what's current in jeans and I just don't like to pick them up or I really don't pick them up anymore unless it's the basics like the Levi's and the obvious things. But these Lucky Brands, I thought they would sell for more than this. They only went for 20 bucks. These were originally $119 jeans. Um, they were white and it was kind of, you know, later in July. So I sold them for $20, best offer. I took a best offer of 20. Next were, again, L.L. Bean. Some convertible trekking or hiking shorts. These are the kind that they zip at the uh, kind of the thigh so they can be either hiking pants or shorts. These are really popular. And if you see these in a good brand, I would say they're a pickup. These were an unusual color and they still sold for $28. I love the color, lime green. They still sold for $28. Next is an item that was in my $100 plus, one of my $100 plus videos. I love doing those. This was a Sur Surfanic is the brand and it's a split roller duffel bag. So you, it's a pulling duffel bag. It's um, kind of a very unstructured sort of suitcase and I sold that for $100 on Poshmark. Next, I didn't realize I had so much L.L. Bean in this haul, in this uh, what's sold, but I have an L.L. Uh, uh, Bean yellow chore coat. So this was a suede collar, um, lightweight yellow, really pretty woman's jacket. I paid $7.99 for that and I sold it for $45. So the keywords you wanna use for those types of coats, barn coat, chore coat, those are uh, what people look up when they're looking for those kinds of <clears throat> you know, great for fall, outdoor hiking and whatever. You're not necessarily going to be using it in your barn, doing your barn chores, but that's what they're called. And that's, those are great keywords to use. Next was a vintage um, t-shirt, graphic t-shirt. This had the single stitch and it was true vintage. I picked it up for 99 cents and I sold it for $18 on Poshmark. It was of Bethany Beach, Delaware. So popular beach and uh, along the Delaware coast and easy sale. Next was a totes uh, 1980s vintage raincoat trench coat in rose pink. I thought this would sell for more. Um, I, I maybe should have held on to that until next season but I thought it was you know it was a little past season with the color and the raincoat kind of thing and I took a best offer of $22 for that. I only paid $3.99 for it so I'm in the profit, I'm in the green, I'm in the black and um it was worth the pickup. And next was this graphic t-shirt. This was super cool. 
This was true vintage. It had a vintage tag and um, it was long sleeve with this graphic on it, but it was a woman's graphic t-shirt, um, you know, kind of a, um, a more fitted woman's style. And this sold for $35. So at $1.99 buy-in, that's a great sale for me. Next was Abercrombie and Fitch. Sometimes pick that up, sometimes don't. But these were some Tugger cargo short swim shorts and swim short season. You know, they just kind of fly off the shelves sometimes. So Abercrombie and Fitch, I got those for, um, I paid $3.99 for those and I sold them for $26. And I have a couple more items. Next is the Whistling Oyster Novelty Purse. So from Algonquit, Maine. This is a uh, store in Algonquit that sells novelties and souvenirs and things like that. I looked that up online to find that out. Sold it for $17 and I paid $2.99 for that. This next item is a new tags, uh, Vineyard Vines t-shirt. Vineyard Vines can sell well sometimes, sometimes not, but this was brand new tags and from Martha's Vineyard and a men's XL. So again, just kind of checks off more than one box. So <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily pick up something just because it was Vineyard Vines, but if it's Vineyard Vines and it's a good size and it's new tags and it's from Martha's Vineyard, which is going to have people, you know, who are searching for Martha, Martha's Vineyard items, then it's a good pickup. And I did sell that for $30. Uh, this, fit, this skirt was absolutely amazing. I sold it for $116 and this did show up in my what sold for over a hundred. And it's from Geiger, G-E-I-G-E-R, Tyrol, Australia. This was boiled wool. And if you know boiled wool, it just feels kind of, it's real kind of soft and um, smooth, almost thick. So this boiled wool skirt, true vintage, sold for $116, and I paid $5.99 for that. And finally is a Burgundy Wine Coach Pouch Cosmetic Bag. This was uh, new without tags. This was an item that I showed in a small video earlier uh, when I first started YouTube. I picked this up and it had some had something on it on the zipper. It looked like that's probably why it got donated to the Salvation Army. It came from the Macy's store in my area that had closed and it looked like there was maybe some food on it, like kind of in the zipper. And so I showed a video of like how I cleaned that and got it back to its brand new condition. So I paid um, three or four ninety nine for that. And I sold that for $71. Now I sold it on Poshmark and that's because I listed it first on Poshmark with coach items. Um, you know, I knew that that came from a Macy's store, so I knew that that was authentic. You have to be very, very careful with making sure that you're validating the authenticity of items like those higher end items, because if you put something up on uh, something like Coach, for example, on eBay, and they determine just through the photos that it's not authentic, they will take it down, they can ding your account, they can suspend you, all kinds of things like that. Uh, Poshmark doesn't have anything in place like that at the moment, though they will take items down. Um, they're not going to really necessarily ding your account. But I knew that that was authentic, and so I sold that for $71. That was a great price. So I did sell a few multiple items on Facebook Marketplace as well as Mercari and one item on Depop during July, but I'm going to hold that for the second uh, video that I'll do maybe next week. I'm going to kind of catch up once the summer winds down. I want to catch up on all of my what sold videos. Again, I said those are my favorites and um, so I'm going to hold those for now. So that's what sold for me for that first part of July with maybe about 10 or 12 other items um, from those other platforms. I hope you guys have a great time thrifting. I hope you're enjoying these last few weeks of summer, if it's still summer for you. And I wanna thank you so much for uh, liking, subscribing, and commenting on my video. It helps out the channel so much. I'm at 400 subscribers, which I just, I can't even believe really. And I'm so happy that um, you're joining me on this journey. So thanks, see you soon, bye.